Hey everybody, um, I meant to do this yesterday, but I was up until 2, so I didn't get to do it, so I figured I'd do it right now. Um, update from yesterday, which was day 4, uh, five. Um, the pastors came yesterday, or no, Yesterday was the first full day with the pastor, so they had a marriage enrichment retreat, and I apologize for the traffic noise, but I really wanted to sit outside because it's not 100 degrees yet, and it feels good. Um, first day of the marriage enrichment retreat, I went with the kids group because we have to watch our children whenever they do this. Um, they had a great time. I'm not sure how many kids there were. Maybe like, maybe 20 kids or so. All from ages like three months old to 12. And it was a super fun day. Really hectic and crazy. Um, still dealing with language barrier and stuff like that. A lot of the older kids speak English really well. Uh, but they still, um, some of the younger girls that I was playing with most of the time speak, speak Hindi and we just had a great time hanging out with them. They played soccer and did crafts and stuff and I was telling everyone yesterday, it was really amazing to watch because they didn't fight all day. Like we did not have one fight or disagreement like among kids like there was like crying for like wanting their mom and stuff but not not one fight or argument or disagreement broke out and it just absolutely blew my mind uh the all of them have siblings not, i'm pretty sure not one of them's the only child and i was expecting the siblings to fight and they did not fight. They protected each other, and they were, like, almost best friends. It was crazy. And it was just neat to see, like, what growing up in a community of people feels like. None of them, well, a couple of them had, like, separation anxiety, like, later as the day went on, like, they wanted their mom. But none of them, like, like freaked out, like, wanted to hold on to their mom as they left. They just went with a group of kids that you know, they have been in community with, and the things that they talk about, they're, they're all pastor's kids, and the things that they talk about just make me feel like I'm waste, not waste, wasting my life. Same thing I said with the pastors, but the kids are great. Um, Eli Eliezer is the son of Pastor Emmanuel Krupa, I'm pretty sure. He's nine, and he was just talking to me about being in the slums, because that's where they live and that's where they witness to people. Um, being in the slums and just being, like spreading the gospel to people. And this boy is nine years old. And he just, he knows he's gonna be a pastor someday. And he just, he's so mature for his age. And it's just interesting when like your household has like a common mission, how like that, greatly reflects into your kids and that was really inspiring to me uh, to watch and to hear about and they are great they're so funny and they're a bunch of young boys so they were hilarious um, so we had them all in the morning while the pastors and their wives did the marriage and Richmond retreat and then we did instead of a second session in the afternoon everyone wanted to go swimming all the pastors included and it's like oh this will be fun the pool is really nice and everything so I didn't realize I guess that none of them had been in water before or very rarely like less less than one handful like less than five times they've been um, in water and they all wanted to learn how to swim and they were all, especially the little girls, Didi, Didi, Auntie, do you know, you know swim? And I was like, yeah, they're like, teach me, teach me. And I was like, I have no idea how to teach someone how to swim. I've just always, as far as I can remember, I've known how to swim. 
maybe I took swim lessons at the Y in like third grade, but I feel like I could swim before that. And I just, I, I had no idea how to teach them. So Roberta was there and she knew how to teach swim lessons. So I tried to teach them, but you can't teach a six year old girl to swim in an hour. But I tried and it was just, it was really scary because uh, Roberta and I were in there and then like they brought some of their kids in because they wanted to swim and uh, Stuti jumped in and she, I mean, we were in the kiddie pool. It was not deep at all. And she f jumped in and she didn't get her feet under her. So she was just laying face first in the ground and like thrash in the water and thrashing. So I lifted her up really fast. And then I realized, oh my gosh, like she was drowning. And I had never seen what that looks like for someone to not know what to do when they get in the water. Because to me, it's just obvious that you put your feet underneath you and you stand. I mean, she could stand in this water super easily. But I now I know what it's like, like why people drown in water that they can stand in. And a couple other girls did the same thing. They were running and they would lose their foot and they would just float on the, like face first in the water. They wouldn't know what to do. And the pastors did the same thing when they walked, they got in the water. It was, it blew my mind. And it was very stressful and scary to me at the same time because we had almost every single pastor and all of their kids and a lot of their wives in the water at some point. And we were only in, there was a kiddie pool section, a shallow end, and then most of the pool was a deep end. But none of them could go in the deep end because they didn't want to swim. So we had all of those people in the, that small area and the pool staff was freaking out. They had no idea what to do because there were so many people. And the pastors were so funny and just having such a great time. They were hitting beach balls back and forth and one pastor hung out in a pink inner tube the entire time, which these are like some of the like most like prestigious pastors, like the way that uh, Crossover talks about them. I just am so honored to have met them. They are just, they know their stuff and they do fantastic work for the Lord. And it was so great. It was just so great. They were holding each other under the water and splashing each other. And it was just funny to see kind of grown men just like relax and have fun and just enjoy themselves. And I know a lot of them don't have vacations. They work probably 16, 17 hours a day, every day. And I, I'm so glad that we gave them a break. And that was fun. Then I ended up hanging, uh, went to the, well, I got sunburned, first of all, on my face, even though I put sunscreen on. And it was just, everyone was like, oh my gosh, your face is red. I was like, yeah, I know. But it was funny because the, the pastors, when they came out of the, the evening session of their retreat, they looked at me and they were like, oh my gosh, infected. I was like, no like the sun and they were like oh and it was just funny because I'm not sure if their skin ever gets terribly red but uh, they thought my face was infected because it was red and I was just like no that's what happens to white people's skin when we stay in the sun for too long so that was funny and a couple pastors like still want to see my face because they've never seen a sunburn before which my face has been way more burnt than it is right now, so that's kind of funny. Uh, what else? Went to the market with uh, Abby and Chris, which was really fun too. Uh, we, they went to get um, mangoes and Uno cards. <laughs> so we drove to the bottom of the hill and uh, got out as they were buying mangoes from the street vendor, and it was very interesting to be a minority. And I felt that a couple times before, but not like in a nation of people. So lots of people were staring at me, which I'm a white person, so I'm, I stand out. And that was just interesting, but it was so cool to just see the culture and the people and just how completely different from here it is. Just like a different world. Oh my gosh, it's so crazy. But I love it, and it's beautiful and wonderful. And 
I'm so glad that I'm here and I don't really want to go home because it's amazing. Um, let's see. Second part of the marriage retreat, watch the kids again, then uh, had dinner, got to talk with uh, Pastor Emmanuel Krupa about his story and his story is just amazing. I mean, in a nutshell, he came from the slums, uh, ended up finding Jesus through a missionary that came over. Um, and like later in his life through uh, lots of depression and thoughts of suicide and a terrible childhood. He said that sometimes they wouldn't eat for three or four days because they didn't have money for food. And um, he went to seminary and became a pastor and just, he was so thankful to the Lord for like um, getting him out of the slums and getting him a degree and stuff uh, that he decided I'm going to go back to the slums. So he went back. He lives there with his family. He's got three biological kids and three street kids that he's taken in uh, as his own. And then him and his wife run an orphanage of 11 kids. And they also teach classes like sewing classes and Bible studies and stuff for the kids in, in the slums where they're at. So they were just always pouring into kids, and he just told me, he's like, you know what, there's, there's leaders in power right now that are corrupt, and you can't, you can't do anything about that. He's like, the only thing you can do is raise up the next generation of leaders and raise them up well. And he's like, kids are so important. How you raise them and the morals and everything, like what you raise them to be is so incredibly important. And I was like, that's a great point. That's very true. He just takes that so seriously, he just loves being around his kids and pouring into his kids, and it, that was great to see. I heard the marriage enrichment retreat went really well. I wasn't there, and I hope that I can go today and stay because they're talking about conflict res resolution, which I feel like is good for anyone to hear, whether you're married or not. So that was neat. We went and we sang a happy birthday at midnight last night to, um, oh my gosh, I forgot her name. She works for Crossover. She's here um, with her husband, William, and she's she's from India. Crap, I forget her name. Oh well, we went. And we sang to her at midnight last night for her birthday, and we kind of did it like Christmas carol style, where we sang outside her door and waited for her to open it. And she came out, and she was crying, and she was just so thankful that we like came and sang to her and that was I that was awesome to see because I was like we just sang happy birthday it's not like terribly big deal but she was so thankful and that was fun so stayed up playing playing uno and euchre with people just talking with them getting to know them um it it's just a super great environment and I'm really sad for the pastors to leave today but the girls come today so they will be here for lunch and won't get to take any more pictures because we're not allowed to take pictures with the girls, which is fine. Found out that they are all 18 and older because Crossover does not have a license to get girls that are under 18. So they are a little farther from their rescue from trafficking than uh, they would be if they were under 18 maybe. But some of them, some of them are farther out than others, uh, I guess. The last time they did the retreat in October, there were only 12 girls, and there are 27 coming right now. So that's how many girls they've gotten from um, October to now in their homes, and they plan to have a lot more soon. Uh, got to talk with Keith about some design work that they need done that I would just love to help them do. So I'm really excited for that and what, what comes out of that. Uh, yeah, I got to FaceTime with Alyssa last night, which was awesome, because I miss her. We are, we are 10 hours ahead, I think. I think we're 10 hours ahead of the States, so it is uh, roughly 7.30 in the morning right now, which the sun's out, and it's beautiful, and I'm going to turn around, and hopefully you guys can see the view, which... I feel like I'm not really on a mission trip, but because this is absolutely gorgeous. We go back to Mumbai later in the week, but the pastors just 
I mean, they've never been anywhere this nice, and I'm not sure if they will be ever, anywhere this nice ever again. So I just love that we're getting to serve them and, you know, allow them some time to rest <laughs> from all the amazing work that they do. So, yeah, I think that's it. I'm going to go get some breakfast. But that was day four from yesterday, and I will make another one uh, whenever we finish today. All right, bye.